Welcome to my review and thoughts of the 2023 Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 in 3D. So I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I absolutely loved. This video will have a number of jokes and I will get into some serious topics. So I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. Also, please note, I will not warn before spoilers for earlier entries in this franchise. And as soon as I end the review itself, please note, the rest of the review will have lots of spoilers. F let's see, for, yeah, for the movie and earlier entries in the franchise, including discussing the ending so this movie is technically a PG yeah if you if you go to IMDB it will claim that this is a PG-13 but that's at this point like a, this this movie basically should be rated R for the violence and disturbing content let's see and it is one of the you know it is the first MCU movie to feature an actual f-bomb not just you know someone starts to say the word and is cut off as has happened a bunch of times no this one legit it's actually you know dropped and yeah so you know be aware of, of that uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm not sure I would take the kids to see this one. It's also very, very upsetting, in part because of, uh, there's there's some very, very harsh child, uh, not, uh, wow, my brain is, I don't think all the sugar is out of my system yet. Animal abuse, animal abuse was what I was trying to, uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I will not be saying the F word in this video or harsh language in general, but let's see. So the, um, let's see. yes, yeah, so, right. Worst to best, keeping in mind I love all of them. They're all amazing. I'm not ranking how much I love them, not whether or not I love them all. Every MCU movie other than this one. At the end of the review itself, I will update this. You know, I will let you know where this movie ranks among them. Iron Man 2, Dark World, Black Widow, Captain America 1, Thor 1, Ragnarok, Hulk, Ant-Man 1, Ant-Man 2, Thunder, Homecoming, Doctor Strange 1, Iron Man 3, Iron Man 1, The Avengers, Ultron, Ant-Man 3, Madness, Far From Home, No Way Home, the Holiday Special, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, 2, Black Panther 1, Winter Soldier, Werewolf, Shang-Chi, Eternals, Wakanda Forever, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. And at the end of the review, I will let you know where this trilogy ranks. But the other MCU trilogies, worst to best, Iron Man and Thor, those are low because of the second entry. Ant-Man... Cap, Cap would be higher if not for the first entry, Spider-Man and Avengers, and honestly, you know, I think it's too early to say about Phase 5, we're only two movies in, but yeah, I feel that the first four phases just kept getting better and better. I am, yeah, I'm, I'm the one person who thinks that Phase 4 is actually really, really solid. And, yeah, like the, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, this one does a really great job commenting on, like, real issues with greater efficiency than non-comic stuff. And, you know, as usual, I recommend Lindsay Ellis' video essay, The Complex Fields of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And, let's see... Yeah, that brings... Right, so this... Heh. I was... When, before I watched this movie, I figured, okay, this movie is made purely for people 
who are completely up to the, you know, I actually, I recommended this movie to my massage, one of my massage therapists, and explained, you know, in order to follow this movie, you're probably going to have to watch the first two Guardians movies, and probably also Avengers 3 and 4, and, you know, she, she has Disney+, Plus, so she's, you know, it's not like she's going to be running around trying to find, you know, they're, they're all on there. But apparently, I mean, yeah, for sure, this movie will hit you harder if you've watched those, as I have. But honestly, and I, I can... I swear I don't have a concussion. This is this is for real. You can actually go into this. This can be the first MCU thing you watch. You'll actually be able to because they they you know you gotta you gotta pay super close attention, but they drop all of the little some some of them really really early on. Actually, like at the you know very early in the movie, they you know yeah it's not it's not a spoiler. You know, F, it's not a spoiler for this movie, it's a spoiler for the others, but I've already let you know that I'm doing that. Quill is still upset about losing Gamora. And, you know, the... The, the exact circumstance, you would think, like, you can't just sum that up quickly, but they actually, they found a way. They, they, I mean, okay, the, the specific details are not going to take a huge amount of time, but no, I, I honestly, this is definitely a movie that you could actually, yeah, I, but, you know, if, if, and, and, yeah, um, you will not be confused if you didn't watch the holiday special, which, you know, I think it's only on Disney Plus. Maybe you can also like buy it, but it didn't hit theaters. A lot of people, f for them, the MCU is movies and theaters. So, but yeah, you can you can absolutely follow this without having watched the the holiday special. There's a couple of things that have changed since the you know let's say let's see when was otherwise yeah otherwise it would be Endgame that was the last time we saw these characters. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of, of status quo changes, but they're also very very quickly you know you you very quickly pick up the stuff that's like v really important, and you know for sure, yes, the movie is made primarily for people who have watched the others, and yeah, like it it effectively builds on those you know you you get the. You know, when you do, like, sequels, it's frustrating if a character hasn't really grown, isn't really in a new place. That was one of the things that's not great about Iron Man 2. It's like, I mean, Tony learned how to care about other people in the first movie, and now he's back to being really reckless. So just, you know, that doesn't happen here. Uh, you know, f for sure, like... You know the 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 character of Gamora is obviously different. Um, yeah, since this Gamora did not spend years with the Guardians, and yeah, but the the yes, it builds on the characters, and it feels like a really satisfying. You know, I I'm not gonna let you know before I get into the spoilers, you know, like if anyone doesn't make it through the movie or something, but something that they've been very careful I'm gonna I'm gonna the the exact quote is that this is the last time we're seeing these guardians in this you know um, is it? Okay, I, yeah. This is the last time we're seeing these Guardians together on screen like this. So, you know, and, yeah, I, I felt like this was a very satisfying, you know, sometimes when they do that kind of thing, they don't really stick the landing. They absolutely, you know, it's James Gunn. Like, honestly, I, I, 
I'm not sure there's any like as long as it's within like these kind of you know he likes weird movies not every movie he's made is like comic book or wait was I feel like did he make one that wasn't weird the one with the um, uh, I'll have it momentarily was oh maybe I'm thinking of someone anyway yeah you know, he likes weird movies. They're not always comic book, but anything within that, I feel like he can make work. It's, so, yeah. I've only watched this movie once, but I started recording as soon as I got back from the theater. You know, and, and every single other MCU movie, well, not Ant-Man 3, but other than that, this and Ant-Man 3 are the only ones that I haven't watched at least twice. And let's see. Yes, so plot, I'm... Yeah, this, this one from IMDb works. Still reeling from the loss of Gamora, Peter Quill rallies his team to defend the universe and one of their own, a mission that could end... that could mean the end of the Guardians, if not successful. And... Let's see the um, yes. So I I have done videos on everything MCU, uh, everything you know, all the movies, all the Disney Plus shows, and uh, you know the the ah um, uh, what's it called the um, Netflix Marvel or Marvel Netflix. I always mix those up and. Currently, I'm working my way through animated Star Wars. Once I'm done with that, I intend to do everything Marvel TV. Uh, you know, but yeah, it'll be a little while. Uh, you know, I'm I'm focusing on stuff that Disney is doing follow uh, Disney Plus is doing follow-ups to. So, animated Star Wars seems to be higher on the on the priority for Disney than, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which, you know, I've heard that some of that show is great, so I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, everything MCU that I've done videos on, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be two links in the description box, one that takes you to, well, there's going to be more than two, but my two playlists for MCU stuff will be in the description box, one for spoiler-free reviews, one for thoughts. And that brings... Right, so the 3D is great. It's not quite Avatar 2. You know, that's not really a, a fair standard. But, yeah, um, the, the 3D, you know, sometimes it adds depth. Sometimes there's stuff that, like, sticks out at us, the viewer. There's things that fly at the screen. And, you know, they don't overdo it, but it's very, very effective. Like, you really... You know, yeah, it adds something extra. I would definitely say, if you have a chance, and it doesn't, like, bug the crap out of you to sit with the 3D glasses on, definitely spring for 3D. So, let's get into the writing. So, the... Yeah. You know, this was written by James Gunn, and I've... Yeah, let's see, the, the, um, yeah, real quick, ranking, worst to best, love them all, everything James Gunn has written and directed that I've watched, the, the holiday special, Guardians of the Galaxy 1, The Suicide Squad, and Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and, yeah, uh, he does a really, really solid job, like, everybody gets... Every character has some personality. Like, nobody is just, like, nothing. If all of them have something that's, like, you can glom onto and, and be really, you know... Yeah. And, and... The... the uh, yeah, some of this I gotta say for the spoiler section. But just, yeah. You know, he does a really, really great job. 
Yes. Um, let's see. Yeah, the plot twists are good. They're not too many, and they're not too easy to figure out. And the yeah, the direction is also great. It's also directed by James Gunn. And let's see. So yeah, the you know several critics independently of each other have said that this is the darkest of the three, and that is definitely the case. This is not going to be like, you know, I definitely recommend watching it, but like, don't make it, it's, don't, this is not a movie to put on if you just want to escape, if you want fun escapism. It is a popcorn movie, but it gets really, really dark. You are not going to leave the, the movie theater like, you know, gleeful and and just, or or at least, you very well may not. And the, um, hold on. so the what, what is it called again? The um, the yeah, we get the awesome mix volume three in this, and yeah, they keep topping like it's it's wild how good James Gunn is at this. Yet again, the soundtrack is even better than the the first two. I'm not saying that every single song is better, but when you look at the whole, you know, just yeah. Now, let's see. So, so yeah, the first of the trilogy has some fun with the character flaws of the members without really challenging them, and then the second does challenge them. This one also does challenge them. And, you know, basically every, you know, the, the major characters have arcs, which, yeah, really, really appreciate. And, let's see. So, so yeah, like the first two movies, we get strong character moments, strong introductions for villains and major characters in general. Like with the first two, we have kinetic, dynamic, varied action that sometimes gets quite creative. Characters having to improvise, fight without their usual weapons. Now, the first movie has a lot of exposition. I think overall this one does have a lot as well you know that's the thing with you know the first one has to introduce all these new places and organizations and and species and all this stuff this one is made in part to bring everyone up to speed you know it is also like you know if you only watch like you know yeah the the guardians do briefly appear oh yeah i forgot to mention that earlier but yeah Endgame wasn't the very last, the very most recent time we saw these characters. We did also see them in Love and Thunder. But, yeah, you know, if you only watch these, you know, yeah, you might have forgotten at least some of the really important stuff. So this, you know, reminds you. Now, let's see. Right. Um... This one, Craglin has still not quite gotten good at the Whistle Arrow yet. And that is a thing in this. Like, there's a, you know, not a spoiler, because they, they show almost immediately. It's one of the first things you see, is that he's still struggling with that thing. And they make a thing out of it. You know, in, in so many movies, so many lesser movies, it would just be like, Haha, look at him, he still can't. But no, it actually, it's, yeah, there's actually a sort of character arc there where he's, like, he wants to be able to, to do this thing right, you know, and, like, there's there's stuff where, you know, you, you find yourself thinking, oh, Craglin, this would be this would be a really great time to master the arrow. Come on, dude, you, you got this, you got this. And I'm not gonna give away whether he got this, but it's it's very, very nicely done. I I really 
if I if I had a hat. I gotta buy a hat so I can tip it to to so, so my hat could come off to to James Gunn. He is really freaking good at this. And yeah, you know the movie has there are more yeah the movie has more meaningful things to say about blood relatives versus found family like the other movies. And let's see. Yeah, you know, uh, the, the these are. I, I took a bunch of notes. I just rewatched the the four movies that the Guardians are like. You know, yeah. I also watched Love and Thunder. Uh, what was that a month ago? A little, little bit back. But over the over the last week or so, I rewatched the two Guardian solo movies and Avengers three and four as well as the the holiday special and took notes in preparation for this and yeah one of the things i just wrote was these the, the solo movies are some of the most emotionally intelligent mcu movies and yeah this one as well and yeah the the first two movies have some of my favorite climax scenes in all of the MCU and yeah this one has yet another it's just absolutely amazing like I would not have believed that they could actually top the second one with with the emotion and all the different elements that are in the air running and just all the all the character stuff that's in there and just but yeah they managed to yeah and let's see. Yes, you know the they they made us cry over the death of a talking tree twice, and yeah, this movie has also gotten some people to cry. I, you know, I watched it in in the theater, and like, yeah, there was there was one person like audibly like crying, not not like you know, holding back tears, but like audibly crying and you know no one was like making fun of you know him but yeah it was it was pretty clear and yeah I I 100% understand you know I, I I really I steal myself from movies that I'm going to you know talk on camera about but you know, yeah, the, the on the second viewing, I probably will cry. That was was that with the first one? Certainly with the second one. Yes, yes. Also with the also with the second one. Yes. Um, when when you know the the yeah the 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 mother, you know, both at the very start and. Her brief appearance at the very end of the first movie that really got to me on the second viewing, and let's see, yeah, you know, in these James Gunn movies, like his writing and directing is reminiscent of that of Jordan Peele, except with action sci-fi tropes, not horror ones. He knows when to subvert them and when to play them straight. If he subverted all of them, the movie would end up being parody, and while that would be fine, it's just not the intent. If he played all of them straight, we would know what was coming. But as it is, we never know if a trope is going to be subverted or played straight, so it's much more effective than if he went all in on either subversion or playing straight. Now, yeah, so the High Priestess, like Guardians 2, she's really not given enough to do, the, to, to really justify casting someone of Elizabeth Debicki's talent and range the way that it is in movies like Widows and Tenant and just yeah it's it's too bad but you know yeah ultimately like she was probably cast because of her elegant and and you know basically like ideal you know not not to get like creepy or weird about it, but you know, if you you know, you look at her face and she really does, you know, yeah, she, it it looks like 
the the way that you would design a, a face and that is the you know yeah that's not a spoiler for this one we already knew that they were designed we we're told that in the second one you know and this time we meet the designer never meet your heroes not not sure he was anybody's hero but still now let's see yeah, so the second movie explores the frailty of Quill's male ego, the abandonment issues of Rocket, the trauma that shape Gamora and Nebula, and to the cast credit, all of them really go for it, allowing themselves to be very unappealing despite their appearance and appeal, and yeah, same here. Sarah Holly Finn, who cast all the MCU movies, is integral to the MCU success. Not all heroes wear capes. And... Let's see. So yeah, in the second solo movie, you learn that Quill has not visited Earth since he was taken because he can't bear to be reminded that his mother is dead. He did visit Earth in Endgame, but we didn't really see, uh, you know, how that affected him. This movie does bring that up. The, the idea that Peter could hypothetically go back to Earth now. And yeah, I, I think they got some really good stuff out of that. And let's see. Yeah, uh, you know, like the the um, yeah. Actually, each of these has gotten at least somewhat darker and shows more cruelty. You know, James Gunn makes sure there's always a reason for it. It's not just like edge lord crap. But yeah, you know, the the second one also has scenes of cruelty and such. And yeah, this one goes even further. And, yeah, like the first two, this movie loves the 80s. And, let's see. Yeah, you know, James Gunn is willing to have dramatic moments without undercutting them with jokes. Yeah, each of these has at least some of that. And... Yeah, you know, James Gunn is one of the best directors working in the MCU. Up there with, in no particular order, Taika Waititi, Sam Raimi, Ryan Coogler, and the Russo brothers. And... Let's see... Um... Uh, I guess is that yeah, like the the other movies and the Suicide Squad and the Holiday Special, this does feature a scene of major characters partying, and we still see that the Guardians are not completely selfless; they're anti-heroes more than heroes, and yeah. As of the holiday special, and still the case here, Mantis acts like the responsible older sister to Drax. Like, when it comes to the abuse, it's not so one-sided like it was in Guardians 2. She gives as good as she gets, and yeah, I really appreciate that. You know, I'm not sure that anybody... You know, pe people who loved the first movie weren't saying that it's unacceptable for characters to, you know, abuse each other in these movies. It's just that the the abuse directed at Mantis in the second movie is so one -sided. Like, Drax is very abusive towards her. And, yeah, like, the, the other... Like, I guess Gamora tries to, to get Drax to stop that. But, like, yeah, you know, Mantis doesn't intentionally abuse anyone in Guardians 2, but in the holiday special and here, yeah, she, you know, she does sometimes do these things, and it like, she wouldn't really fit with the rest of them if she never did. You know, they are all, they, they abuse each other, and it is, you know, it doesn't mean that they hate each other or that they shouldn't have anything to do with each other it's just you know they're not great at showing like positive you know it's it's as close as they get to showing 
like affection or or something is the yeah. Now let's see. Yeah, and you know the the high evolutionary, you know, claims he wants to make every single living thing perfect. Now, I have always loved science and think science is much more likely to solve our problems than religion. Don't get me wrong; I don't mind religion that doesn't deny science. But, you know, what he is doing is technically science. It's what you get if you go for science with no ethics. So, and, and that is something that is extremely important to, you know, challenge. Now, let's see. The, yeah, uh, the movie does a good job going into grief. And let's see the yeah. So there. Uh, oh right, I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. I think the ending is perfect. There's no day six machina or other convenient writing, and the movie does have both a mid credit scene and a post credit scene. Not everyone is going to feel the need to, you know, the, the post credit scene is basically, you know, if you, if you stay through the entire length of the, the credits, which is about 10 or 11 minutes, then, you know, that's only for people who just really love these characters and want every little morsel that they can get. The mid credit scene, I would say, is important. That one you definitely want to make sure that you see if you at all care about like MCU stuff. Now let's see and and the mid credit scene you know I think there's maybe two minutes of credits before that one starts so it's you know you won't be sitting th through very much credits if that's the only one you go for. So let's get into the character. So Chris Pratt as Peter Quill slash Star-Lord, you know, he's very much struggling with the, you know, as, yeah, let me just blanket say every single person gives a fantastic performance of it. Nobody felt like they were there as just, you know, like I've, I've seen some people say, oh, you know, James Gunn put some of his friends in there because he likes giving them work. They all have stuff to do. Like, yeah, you know, I rec I recognize several that was like, okay, yeah, I know James Gunn has worked with that person before. But it didn't feel like, oh, wow, James Gunn is just going to put his buddies in, in this just because, you know, they, they had characters that were distinct from what he's had them do before. You know, it didn't feel like the, the just, yeah, you know, but the, yeah, I, I thought all of them did really, really well. Peter is struggling with, you know, Gamora isn't dead anymore, which, you know, it's not that he spent a huge amount of time, you know, he was, he, he got blipped. So she didn't, you know, he didn't have, he didn't spend very long, you know, 